Welcome to the WellStack Podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Rossick, the Director of WellStack Content Solutions. In this episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Philip Hecker, CEO of advice engagement platform, Bento Engine. Philip, thank you so much for joining me. Shannon, good to see you again. Great to be here. So I, I did a little stalking online. I saw that Bento Engine was actually based in uh, Westport, Connecticut. I grew up in Fairfield County and in Darien, New Canaan, and spent a lot of time mainly shopping in Westport and go, popping over to Stu Leonard's. But um, please tell me the Spotted Horse Tavern is is still there in downtown. That was one of my favorite small spots world, to go. Shannon, small <laughs> world, um, great to hear. And yes, it's still around. And I'm happy to report that their Brussels sprouts still make for an awesome appetizer. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yes, that was always one of my go-tos there. Hoping to get back there soon, but um, just love that area. So, but out of curiosity, how'd you how'd you land there? Well, classic story. Uh, loved New York City many many years. Me and my wife, being young professionals, four kids later, we determined that our two bedroom uh, apartment might be too small to raise those four successfully. So we went suburb shopping. You know, looking at the tri-state area far and wide and for a variety of good reasons, ended up in Westport, Connecticut. And I have to tell you, 10 years later, really gotten uh, to grow fond of this part of the country. Love it. Yeah, it was a great spot to grow up. So I will always have love for for the, the tri-state and especially Fairfield County in my heart. So, so before we discuss all things Bento Engine, you know what's coming first. So Philip, welcome to segment one called Stats All Folks. Gives a little bit of Bugs Bunny vibes. But I wanted to talk about the number 85. 85 trillion, actually, to be exact. You know, last year in a UBS investor watch report, they said that many investors are unprepared for the great wealth transfer in which ne nearly 85 trillion is expected to pass to younger generations in the US over the next, say, 20 to 25 years. But for some reason, nobody seems prepared. So, you know, while Bento Engine has only been around since 2001, you've already launched a children and wealth program. So what is it and how is that helping with opportunities with advisors? Shannon, happy to start right there. A topic of personal interest and passion, how to introduce and when to introduce the next generation to the important concepts of money and wealth important for us individually as family members and as professionals driving the wealth management industry forward. By way of context for that program, real quick, children want to learn more. 74% of American teens don't feel confident in their personal finance knowledge. At the same time, parents want more help. 82% of them are looking for additional resources to help their children learn about finances. And last not least, we as an industry we as advisors oftentimes struggle to retain the next generation if and when G1 passes. You know the sad stats along that dimension. So against that backdrop, we develop a program, Children and Wealth, that allows client-centric financial advisors to engage and serve their client family early and constructively. And here's how it works. Every two years, as the children grow, from age four to age 18, the advisor in her CRM will receive an alert of that birthday coming up and a package of age appropriate guidance, information and activities to share with the client family. Putting the advisor in a position to proactively serve the family at large and help the children introduce to the important concepts of money and wealth in bite-sized, age-appropriate ways, always using a mix of information and activities that the family can do together. Well, I love that you threw some stats back at me. So I have one more for you. And it was actually in a recent uh, FSI Broadridge study um, of the advisors that were actually surveyed, 55% offered their clients, children or grandchildren, financial literacy lessons. I mean, that definitely seems encouraging, but I feel like that should be 100%, right? Short answer, Shannon. Yes, I would concur. More nuanced perspective as this. Offering a service does not mean necessarily it gets used. Let me throw out some examples to bring that to life. There are tens of thousands of firms that offer trust and estate services. 
and yet 68% of Americans pass without a will. There are hundreds of thousands of financial advisors out there doing the right thing, and yet 85% of Americans who turn 50 and could make catch-up contributions in their retirement accounts don't do so. Offering and delivering at scale in a systematic, you know, comprehensive way are unfortunately two different things. Absolutely. So moving on from stats, you know, I want to get into the core of this episode's topic. Your mission at Bento Engine is to ultimately bring better advice beyond investing to more families. What does that mean and, and what are the benefits? Think about advice beyond investing as all the important and impactful wealth management advice that families deserve that goes beyond the ups and downs of the market or the durations of the investments. It is topics such as making sure they utilize tax advantage savings and investing opportunity, such as the catch-up contributions at age 50 that I just alluded to. We think of it as moments that matter in the lives, in the journeys of the clients and prospects. And those moments that matter break down into two categories. Some are highly predictable, others are more reactive. Highly predictable, Uncle Sam gives us 15 age milestones that matter because they trigger distinct wealth management risks or opportunities. For example, that infamous age point 50 catch-up contributions, 62 social security, 65 Medicare, 70 and a half QCDs, 73 now RMDs, I could go on and on. Uncle Sam gives us 15 highly predictable age-based milestones that matter that client-centric advisors should utilize to proactively advise all of their clients and prospects on what to do in those moments that matter. Those are the proactive ones. Then there's life events, getting sick, having a child, getting married, getting divorced, parents passing away, moving to Florida, buying a business, selling a home. I could go on and on. Easily two dozen life events that not always, but oftentimes happen in the lives of the clients and prospects. And when they do, thoughtful advisors want to be there with proactive advice or reactive advice and they want to help their clients th through those situations and capture the money in motion that you alluded to earlier on. So I'm not going to lie, I had to do a bit of research on this one, but it's obviously an important concept that's driving really what seems to be the ethos of Bento Engine is knowing when to engage with clients. And that has a lot to do with the trans theoretical model of change. And just for our listeners, um, what that is, it's a psychological concept that's ultimately a framework that organizes behavior change and provides insight into the support people need at each stage to encourage change. And I've heard you talk a lot about the timing of advice. What does that have to do with encouraging action towards financial goals? First off, very well explained. <laughs> Secondly, let me try to keep it simple. Timing matters. I hope you can concur. Even the best advice when delivered the wrong point in time tends to fall flat, tends not to be heard. So in order to be heard, it's important that advisors pick the right moment to engage and serve their clients in. And how proactive to be, how much ahead of the client reaching a certain age milestone to reach out depends on the advice opportunity at hand. For example, two months before the children turn 14 will be perfectly sufficient to reach out and educate them on how to get working papers and how to put the legally earned income into custodial IRA accounts under the kid's name so that the kids get to enjoy the power of tax deferred compounding for decades to come. Two months will do. However, for a decision such as when to best start taking social security benefits, the window opens up at age 62. I hope you concur two months ahead of time would not be sufficient. There, it might be more prudent to start that dialogue two years ahead of time so that advisors and clients have appropriate time to discuss the strategy and put the necessary requirements and elements in place. So long story short, yes, timing matters. Yes, thoughtful advisors are being 
proactive to different degrees, varying on the advice opportunity at hand. And we as Bento Engine help that on that journey, because as you know, we pipe the appropriate alerts into their CRM for them to execute on appropriately ahead of time. We help them on the important dimension of timing of advice. And I would imagine this is a bit of a shift for advisors, um, almost a rewiring, if you will, to have to think about advice in this way, to, to be this proactive. So I'm sure the reception has been wonderful knowing that there's a technology out there that can help drive this. Yes, but to put us into the appropriate light, we're quite modest that way. <laughs> Good advisors have been doing that work for a long time for many of their clients, or I should say, for their best clients. What we're trying to do is give them technology and compliance pre-approved content so that they can scale that important work and serve not only their best, but also the middle of the book and the bottom of the book with that type of impactful advice. Well, I appreciate you taking a deeper dive into all things Bento Engine, but it's time now for segment two of this episode, Ask Us Anything, where we've gone out to our social universe and asked them to submit questions that they want answered by you, Philip. And boy, did we have an overwhelming response. You are a popular guy. So I hope you're ready for the hot seat. We probably could have Bring spent the whole episode doing this. <laughs> so uh, the first question we received was, I know that Bento provides content to support advisors in engaging with clients. I'd love to know how quickly the content is updated in face of changing laws or regulatory shifts. Great question. And indeed, one key element of the Bento value proposition is to keep the content fresh and accurate and relevant at all times. So we work with a pool of recognized subject matter experts that not only create the content, but also keep it current. So as laws and regulations change, we quickly update all affected materials to make sure that our clients can serve their clients always with the latest and greatest. To bring one topical example to life, Secure 2.0 was signed into law on December 29th. On Gen 2nd, we had all materials updated so again, that our clients can serve their clients always with the latest and greatest. Well, there you go. We heard it here first, folks. Within days, <laughs> they can have every Vento can have everything updated. Uh, well, thank you for that answer, Philip. And we have a couple more. So um, we had one uh, one user reach out and say, "Would love to hear which formats most subscribers and advisors are gravitating towards using with clients between PowerPoints, email templates, audio scripts." things of that nature. Is there a clear winner uh, or are you finding that certain uh, modalities are a better fit for certain you know, concepts and strategies? Great question. By way of context and background for our listening audience, the Bento advice that's being pushed into the CRM comes in multiple formats. Think PowerPoint pages, PDFs, talking points in case the advisor wants to pick up the phone or emails that are ready to go. And we do that because we acknowledge that clients have different learning styles and communication preferences. Some clients are visual learners. They enjoy looking at a PowerPoint page with graphs and no explanations. Others hate looking at PowerPoint pages. They want a crisp email or a phone conversation. So we put advisors in a position to communicate the same advice, but in different modes of communication picking the best mode on a client or prospect specific basis. That's the context. The short answer to the great question, it's really all over the map based on client preference, you know, depending on the composition of the book of the advisor. By and large, we observe advisors using different modalities on the same topics in client specific bases. One last comment is the higher the H point, think 65 plus the more a combination of the modes we observe, meaning the PowerPoint and PDF and the talking points and the email, which we don't mind. We all know the, the saying, it takes seven times to drip to truly you know, have impact. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Next question um, was, what are the risks to advisor practices that aren't first movers on advice engagement technology that 
kind of have that attitude. Can I just run things the way I have for the last decade? Oh, gee, great, <laughs> great question. And there I would say, with respect to Bento Engine and frankly, the entire advice engagement category on the FinTech, you know, map, these tools are designed to scale the great work that great advisors are doing already for their greatest of clients and bring it, as I alluded to, to the rest of the book. So the danger, the inherent danger of keeping it old school and manual is that you can scale and grow your practice as efficiently as those advisors can that use supporting tools such as the ones that you find in the advice engagement category. And the next question actually goes back to, we touched on a little bit uh, earlier in our conversation around financial literacy. Somebody asked, what can be done to fill the gap in a client's financial literacy when they don't know they should be getting Bento's level of financial advice? Well, great question. And thinking about that, I would argue that's the very essence of the value that a thoughtful advisor can bring to the table, meaning clients don't know what they don't know. They don't know the gaps that they have in their own knowledge base or frankly, behavior patterns. And that's where we as client-centric human advisors come in, analyze the situation and fill in the gaps and put on the radar, put on the agenda, the appropriate topics at the appropriate point in time. And the last question we received and a bit of a shout out as well. They said, I love Bento Engine as a user. So kudos to you. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> but past life events, do you think there's value in proactively reminding clients to think of things like work-life balance, bucket lists, and so forth? You know, in other words, reminding people to think, plan, and actually do the fun things that they want to do with their money. <laughs> of course is the short answer. But again, I would argue for now, technology might not be ideally situated to do that, you know, automatically. Perhaps that's an area where the human advisor, again, with her Fingerspitzengefühl, comes in and adds value by engaging and reminding and serving clients in exactly those ways. That makes sense because at the end of the day, we just want to be talked to like humans, right? Drop the jargon and put everything in perspective. And that's where I really see the value around technology like this. Spot on, Shannon. One of our mantras is let's use high tech to make advisors more high touch. Oh, I love that. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> more high tech for more high touch. <laughs> Heard it here first. So I actually had I had one question too. Um, I saved it for the podcast and put it online. But just curious, um, what's on the roadmap for for Bento? What's next? Right now, we're in market with four great programs: Life in Numbers, that focuses on fifteen H points that matter by law. Life Events. We have a direct to client version of those. If you're interested, and as we discussed, we have the Children and Wealth program in market by now as well. We're right now working on the launch of our fifth program coming to a CRM near you in April. It's a lead gen tool helping advisors capture more of the website traffic that they have already and converting that into book meetings by pointing out to those visitors that life is complicated, but that the advisor can help with client-centric advice on moments that matter. Again, wow. that's coming in April. And just in case you're wondering which CRM systems we integrate into today, that is in no particular order, Salesforce, Dynamics, Redtail, Wealthbox, Accelerate, and last not least, our friends from Practify. Oh, all the good ones. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic news. Really excited to see that hit the market. I can imagine the reception of that is going to be huge. So congratulations. Like I said, only being around for a few years um, Bento has launched so much in just a few years. So very clear that you have, you have your fingers on the pulse when it comes to this very important topic. And Philip, I appreciate you being put on the hot seat and, and your insightful answers and, uh, and helping out, helping out, uh, folks, uh, to answer all their questions. So we've come to our final segment, which I keep saying might be my favorite called stack it or whack it. So I'm going to throw out a few technologies, not necessarily well tech related. And you tell me if it is worth the hype or not. So stack it or whack it. And the first one I had, um, 
and I think this is really interesting because it almost ladders up into um, this idea of we, we gather so much data on ourselves now. So the smart light bulb with built-in health monitoring radar technology. So it could, you know, track your sleeping, your biometric measurements, just as heart rate, body temperature, vital signs. Um, but it, they, they combine it with uh, AI algorithms to help user mo users monitor their health statistics with just lighting in a room. And I feel like the convergence of wealth tech, health tech, it's all happening, but what do you think? <laughs> Wow, that sounds very ambitious and I very cool. I would argue that if it works, stack it, stack it, stack it. <laughs> and here's why. Health, so important to us. Many of us may have tried with wearables that help us on that front. You know, think the watches, think the garments, which have downsides, including one needs to remind to put it on. So if the light bulb in the ceiling does that automatically for me, does pick up my vitals and provide me information on when my heart rate gets too heated during a meeting, I would appreciate it. So again, stack it, stack it, stack it. I oh, love it. And I, I come from the world of, I am very much tied to my Apple watch. It, I wear this thing all the time. I have a horrific tan line because it never comes off. I, I live and die by this thing. And it's a little embarrassing because I'll go to events and I'll be dressed up and I forget to take it off and I'll be in a dress and I look like a spy kid or something. <laughs> so... Shatton, that's a small price to pay. <laughs> exactly. All right. I've, I've one more for you. And I actually just, just stumbled across this and thought you'd be a great person to ask, but it is a brain implant. It's a chip essentially that allows you to use social media with your mind. And it's a company called precision neuroscience. And the chip would be installed through cutting basically a thin slit in the human skull. And you can take it out. If you don't like it, you can, you know, upgrade eventually, but it's happening. You see with Elon Musk with his Neuralink. I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I'm going to whack that one. And here's why number one slit in my brain. You've, you know, you've lost me at slit. <laughs> and number two, if there's one thing in my life that I potentially need less of, then that is social media. So I'm going to whack that one for now. Necessary evil, right? <laughs> Uh, well, I appreciate uh, you indulging me on these, Philip, and I've really enjoyed our conversation. We've covered a lot of ground, but please feel free to tell listeners where they can find out more about Bento Engine. BentoEngine.com or look us up on Twitter or LinkedIn. And Shannon, it's been a pleasure to reconnect and have the conversation with you. Oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll definitely have to do another episode once you have that launch in April, too. I'd love to hear about that. So uh, if you want to stay ahead of the technology status quo, don't miss our WealthStack event, part of Wealth Management Edge, May 21st through 24th in Hollywood, Florida. And you can obviously catch up with me there and be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thanks so much. And thanks for listening.